Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to the fourth installment of our monthly Plus 16 webinar series. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. We know that you're busy, so our goal is to be focused and to pack meaningful data into an efficient 30-minute window. You can drop any questions into the chat as we go through the presentation. We'll save time at the end for Q&A. We will be recording this session and sending out a link. So let's get started. My name is Kathy Dew, and I'm CEO and Information Architect for 2 Plus 2. Today we're talking about the incredibly important task of picking a CMS for your organization. There are many aspects that must be considered when choosing not only the right, but also the best CMS for your organization. And boy, are there a lot of CMS solutions to choose from. Wikipedia has a list of more than 200 CMS systems. This makes it incredibly important to take a holistic approach to, se to selecting your CMS. Um, we've created a chart here to sort of lay out those 200 plus solutions. You can see that 119 of those are open source. Open source equals free in terms of licensing the base product. And many of these solutions are also built on top of an open source free operating system. The biggest player in that market is Linux. So where do you start? It's complicated, but with some guidance, you can narrow in on a short list of viable options. As you can see, SAS is software as a service. There are also a number of commercial applications. In terms of sorting this out, though, let's look at where the big players fall in. In terms of open source, the big players are WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. Those are actually all uh, built on PHP, and again, those are both open source, both in terms of the operating system and the CMS. The commercial solutions are primarily ASP.NET. The big players in this space are Sitecore, EpiServer, OpenText, and then there's also DNN and Kentico that both fall into a little bit of the mid-range market. Those two are a little bit interesting in that they also have free or open source versions of their CMS platform. And then finally, we can't really go on without mentioning SharePoint. While SharePoint isn't just a CMS, it certainly falls into that, um, into that category, and that is also built on the .NET platform. So where do I start? That's a great question. The best approach is to think holistically across these various axes. Cost considerations. What's the cost of the CMS? Basic features. Does it have the basic things that I need? Advanced features. Does the CMS native or via a plugin support the advanced features that you need? Open source versus commercial or proprietary. What are the pros and cons? Do you prefer Windows or Linux? Or maybe it doesn't matter. The admin experience. What is the actual experience and skill set of your editors and other content co contributors? Developer support. Does the CMS technical stack match up to your organization's developer capabilities? And then technical stability. Does the CMS provide adequate technical support? There's definitely overlap in these items, but as a quick reminder, let's just recap exactly what is a CMS. Having a solid and appropriate content management system platform for your website is key to making your website vibrant and engaging. But what exactly is a CMS? From an application standpoint, there are really two parts. The first is the front-end application, where all the content is entered by non-technical users. Then there's the engine of the CMS. That part compiles the information and updates the website for its external audience. CMS platforms can be used pretty much for anything you call a website, air quotes around that. Public websites, B2B extranets, specialty microsites, and even internal company intranets. There are four aspects to the most basic CMS. Creating content, managing content, publishing content, and then retrieving and searching that content. It's worth taking just a little bit, talking a little bit more about each of these um, aspects, even the basic features, as there are differences in these core capabilities. So the number one uh, capability or driver behind the development of those 200 plus CMSs is the ability to allow content creators to easily create and publish content without having to one, know code or HTML, or two, be a designer, be concerned with the layout. Separating the content from the presentation or how it is styled is really critical to retaining the aesthetics of your website, especially as the number of content creators increases. We'll talk about this a little bit more later, but it's really important to remember that formatting the content is not really the business of the people that are writing or providing the content. 
Um, managing content. All of the content creation activity is controlled through security, which allows you to define roles or who is allowed to do what. And then there's a workflow, which is the review, review and approval process. And then there are audit trails, who changed what when, which is then tracked in a database. This last part is really important because it not only helps you apply rigor to your content publishing process based on business rules, but it's as important in that you can roll back your content. As people um, are ma making changes and edits, and invariably people will make mistakes. So being able to roll back to a previous version is really important. Publishing. In many CMS applications, workflow can be invoked to push or notify, usually via email, the newly created content through the review and approval process. That review and approval process is defined either by the content owners or some level of management. It might be corporate communications, it might be HR, it might be finance, um, it might be marketing. Um, many CMS systems allow you to schedule the publication in the future, which is also handy. For larger organizations with enterprise requirements and highly governed content publishing processes, publishing can really get more complicated. For example, you might require a staging instance of your entire website. This is not part of a basic CMS functionality. So, search and retrieval. Now that you have all your awesome content in a database, it needs to be easy to search and display to your website visitors. It's important to index all the data for easy access through search functions and allows users to search by attributes such as publication date, keyword, author. Many CMS offerings have basic search capabilities. Delivering a really amazing search to the end user may require some additional, additional development, especially in terms of formatting the search results. So that's it. Pretty simple, really, or is it? So what are the have-to-haves? The level of automation is one of the first things you're going to look at. Does the CMS offer sufficient automation to make updates easy for you? For example, does it automatically update links to newly uploaded or updated content? Does it create image thumbnails automatically? Um, poorly designed CMS may result in repetitive and duplicate work. A good CMS should make every update quick and effortless. This is one of the reasons why you'll want to involve your content creators in your actual evaluation of the CMS. Navigation and link management. Does your CMS automatically support updating links among pages? Is the navigation automatically updated when you move pages around or create new ones? In terms of documents and multimedia support, can you upload documents of any format? Can you embed videos easily? Can you bring pictures in easily? As we're talking about those various assets, there's also a concept of asset management. If the same images or documents are going to be referenced multiple places, you're going to want a central library to store and reuse those assets. Search capabilities. Does the CMS have search capabilities built in? What is the search engine technology? The two top uh, engines right now are Solar, that's S-O-L-R, and Lucene. Those are some of the best technologies and usually what the commercial systems are using in their CMS. As we move from basic to advanced, we start looking at editorial and review process. So can you have an editor review process where one user prepares an update and another user reviews it before publishing. Authorized access. Can you assign privileges and roles allowing users to predefine levels of access? And then finally that revision control we talked about before. Can you easily revert to a previous version? So we've talked about the basics, but what about the other fancy features that will delight your audience? Here are some of the features that start to distinguish CMS platforms and really might help you narrow in on the best and right CMS for your organization. First up is e-commerce. Do you need an online store based on a catalog for your sales? An e-commerce platform provides a catalog, supports online sales, manages customer accounts, and lets you manage the sales transactions. Another big area is translation. If your organization is global, then you'll need a solid solution for translation. And I don't mean a simple Google translation. That's actually a simple add-on that can be applied to any website. But if you need translation into multiple languages that is sensitive to culture, then you'll need a more sophisticated solution. The larger commercial CMS systems provide multiple cultures for the content, and they also have default workflows, not just to publish, but also to support the translation process, even if it's external to your organization. 
Another big differentiator is how SEO friendly is your CMS. As you know, search engine optimization is a moving target. It's changing constantly. And if you're like most organizations, you actually need to keep up. Your CMS should provide a way for editors and content providers to easily enter the metadata. Um, that includes usually title, description, some of the tags that the search engines are key on, and also to specify image alt tags. Again, through the front end interface, your content provider should be able to do this. It shouldn't require a developer. Um, as you know, the alt tags are really critical not only to SEO, but to making your site accessible. There should also be a way to create an XML sitemap that is invisible to you, your visitors, but used by search engines to better index your website. You want human readable URLs, and you need to make sure that you can change the page name without changing the URL, which would result in a lot of 404 page not found errors. Social media integration. Social media activity can positively impact your SEO. The CMS should make it easy to integrate the ability to like, comment, and share your content, especially your blogs and news articles, which are constantly providing new content. You should be able to also easily add a streaming feed from your social media properties back onto your website. Now let's talk a little bit about content personalization. This is the ability to deliver specific content based on the individual, or it might be the persona of their visitor. Um, this is a great way to further engage your audience. In some cases, you may have premier content behind a, a, a paywall, which doesn't really mean you pay for it, but you actually have to have some kind of user login to get there. Once you know who the visitor is, you can better target specific content for that user. We have one client who recently augmented their profile to collect the person's title, allowing free content to be tailored. So, for instance, not just to, I work at a school, but the differ difference between what a principal versus a school nutritionist versus a teacher might want to read. More sophisticated personalization content delivery systems actually can provide content based on the user's path through the website. Similar, but a little bit different, are advanced marketing, such as A-B testing. Often, you don't know what's going to work in terms of stickiness on your website. A-B testing allows you to actually have two versions of your home page or a landing page, so you can really see which one is getting more of the clicks. Next up is a staging site. If you have a large organization, you'll want to have multiple instances of your website, including development, stage, allowing you to validate content changes, and then, of course, production. Tied to staging and that idea of having a more controlled publishing is the idea of workflow. If you have multiple editors, then you're probably going to want to set up some kind of gatekeeper that can provide a final review and approval before content goes live. You may also have conditional requirements. For example, one client of ours has a gatekeeper on the home page. Any department or area can publish their own content in their section, but if they want something to show up on the home page, that requires a special workflow and a special approval from the marketing manager. There's some other features that we don't really have time for today, but I'll mention them because these may be things that are important to you and things you'll want to ask your CMS vendor. Um, one is integration. Often there's a need to integrate either with accounting or even just a CRM system. Um, or other external services. Uh, you might want a self-service capability on your website for your customer that allows them to look up or access customer-specific data. You might want to move business processes online. You might have a knowledge base. You might want enterprise-wide collaboration. You might want seamless, a seamless login from another network, such as Microsoft Active Directory. You might need a digital workplace for collaboration. You might need team workspaces. All of these are considerations, and the point is you're going to want to be clear about your requirements before you start making decisions about which CMS is right for you. So now let's talk about the big question of open source versus proprietary or commercial systems. Open source software is computer software with its source code made available with a license in which the copyright holder provides the rights to study, change, and distribute the software to anyone for any purpose. Open source software is often developed in a collaborative or public manner. Anyone can modify and enhance the software. These edits are in turn contributed back to the community for anyone's use. Closed or proprietary or commercial software is not open. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each of these approaches. 
So what's great about open source software? It's free, capital F-R-E-E. -E. Um, there's no cost to use the code or the framework. Um, most of these are delivered on an Apache server and built in PHP. Again, the top vendors in this space are Drupal, WordPress, Joomla. Um, number two, there's a vast community of developers. It is open source. There are a lot of people working in these spaces. Um, next, you have direct access to the source code. Um, the next piece is, while there are no support costs for the core code, there may be costs for advanced modules or enhancements. Many people will build purchasable add-in modules for each of those platforms that we talked about. Um, next is, to get the features you want, you might have to go through, you might have to actually solicit and purchase or install a variety or combination of paid and free third-party modules. So this is where the downside of open source starts to rear its ugly head. Because the pool of developers of open source is vast, coding standards can vary greatly. It may be even harder to find good modules in the vast sea of those. So now let's contrast that with commercial systems. So number one, they're, as opposed to free, they're licensing fees associated with commercial systems. Um, but with the commercial system, the bulk of the features is sole source for development and support. This means you're going to get some of that consistency and potentially higher quality in the code that's actually delivered. Um, so there's standards and there also, there's also built-in integration between all these features. Um, an important feature is there's dedicated support for the base system and for any add-ons provided by the vendor. And as long as you go with the technical platform, like Java or .NET, you can be assured that there's a large market share, which means you can easily find developers. Um, next, you'll enjoy a more standard schedule of upgrades to that CMS. Um, in fact, some hosting providers for CMSs will include upgrades as part of that hosting, ensuring that you're always on the latest release. Next, let's talk about the experience for your editors. Um, in terms of editing the CMS, does it match the skills and capabilities of your content co contributors? Consider basic versus advanced editing. Do your editors know C CSS? Do they need to? Is a little bit of HTML helpful? It may be. So as you think about this content generation, you'll want CMS, a CMS that can be configured to help your content editors easily and consistently contribute content that maintains the design. Of course, some training will be required, but make sure the system is easy to use and allows your editors to focus on the content and not on the tool, and that includes formatting. In support of that, uh, one rule is to really limit styling. All CMSs have some type of WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get editor that by default probably gives the user the ability to change the color, the font, the style, perhaps even add inline styles. Opening this up without guidelines and best practices can really compromise the overall integrity of the design of your website. You'll want to be sure that you can limit the set of styling capabilities in your editor based on the capabilities of your, of your content contributors. You'll also want to make sure that you can link back to the site-wide style sheet to ensure consistency. So if someone uses a heading one or a heading two in the content of the page, you'll want to make sure that's consistent across your site. You'll also want to make sure that your CMS provides the ability to set up multiple content types that can be styled separately. Finally, you're going to want to make sure that you create a style guide with examples. So include an online style guide for the site that includes samples of all the content types with various styling applied. For sites with lots of content produced frequently, you should provide a catalog of display options for the same content type. This, in conjunction with a few well-thought-out templates, results in a flexible but consistent editing environment. Everybody wins. But don't forget about your developers. Um, a related to topic is determining how much of your required feature set is out of the box versus development required. To meet your requirements, is it just a matter of configuring the existing CMS features, or does it require customization in the form of additional modules or custom code? Um, for example, one of our clients has an online tool that determines if you're getting enough calcium. This is a custom module that was built by our developers. It's integrated into the CMS platform. In this case, we knew we had to build this for scratch, so it was important that the CMS platform was te technically compat compatible with our developer's skill set. If you have custom features, then there are additional considerations. Does the CMS provide reasonable hooks for custom code? 
Is it easy to integrate those custom modules? Does the CMS code base line up with your technical environment and the skill set of your developers? How wide is the API? API is application program interface, and it's really the way applications talk to one another. This makes it easy to integrate, theoretically easy to integrate with other systems. Technical stability speaks to the overall success of your CMS, especially if you have more advanced requirements. So the questions you're going to want to ask here are, is there a dedicated, timely support system from the CMS provider? Is the CMS well documented? Are there periodic, periodic updates, including point release patches, which usually address bugs, and dot release features, which has our upgrades that include new features? Are there working examples of features that your developer can use to jumpstart the development? So we're finally there. Let's talk about cost. What is the cost of the CMS? Of course, this starts with the CMS itself. But as you can see from our discussion, this is just the beginning. Depending on your needs, the cost of a commercial system may actually or easily offset the cost, the, its cost based on the capabilities it provides. So number one, licensing fee. That can be free with open source to thousands of dollars, depending on the level that you need. Most commercial CMS products have a couple of levels that will correspond to advanced features, the number of servers, and the number of URLs that you need. Number two is annual fees. The CMS, if licensed, may have annual fees, but there's also hosting, there's CMS support, and there's ongoing enhancements. Next set of fees is around professional development. This could be the design and the configuration of your CMS, but it may also be the development of all those additional features that you don't have. For internally hosted solutions, there's also, as you know, many big organizations won't want to host in the cloud. So for their, those customers, there are hardware, database license, and other software licenses that you'll have to consider. Um, next up is really your time. Having a process to get through your project efficiently and effectively is key. So let's talk about some broad generalizations. There are three general scenarios or buckets that you might fall into. The, fall, the first is you're a small um, to mid-sized website with standard features. Your corporate brochure website is a perfect example. These sites are fairly easy to manage. There are several industry standard solutions that offer the functionality needed for a basic set of features. What is required to run these kind of sites is well known and widely available. An open source platform like WordPress leveraging a template design may be the perfect choice. The second scenario or bucket is mid-range websites. These vary in size and complexity. They run up to hundreds of pages and are growing every day. In this scenario, the CMS becomes an application platform that achieves more than just content publishing. Now the CMS also contributes to your communications and marketing objectives and processes. With this project, you'll need to develop a more robust CMS. Open source plus modules or development or a more sophisticated commercial solution might be the right answer. The third and last scenario is complex websites that serve as applications or sets of interconnected applications with collections of content. Page counts might be in the thousands, and these systems require more complex workflows, governance structures, and content modules than mid-range systems. Often, growing companies might start with a mid-range scenario and then evolve to a place where they need a whole suite of more complex features that are integrated and tied together. Commercial solutions are probably your best bet. So let's talk about a process to get started. Here's a quick resource. The first three on the left, Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress are your open source solutions. And then moving over to the right, we have the, the big commercial options, Sitecore, EpiServer, OpenText, and then DNN and Kentigo, which are both commercial and proprietary. Um, and then there's SharePoint. So let's start with what you want to do. Number one, look at what you're currently doing. Identify your pain points. What isn't working with your current publication process, but also determine what's missing. Second, you're going to want to identify scenarios that you desire but you can't currently accomplish with your web system. These use cases are, can be really helpful in evaluating platforms. Next, you really want to formalize your requirements into a prioritized list. That starts with features but also includes technology and what are your integration needs. 
Next, you look at the top players within your general level and budget area. Do some research, get a demo, or see if they have a list of preferred implementation vendors that you can talk to. Next, develop an RFP. Even if it's a simple one-page RFP, put that RFP together and start looking for vendors. In terms of finding the best and right solution, a vendor might be a big help in this process. So thank you. We've included some contact information. The offer is there for a free consultation, uh, probably with me, um, to get started on figuring out what the best CMS is for you. Thank you very much. We've actually run out of time for questions, um, but we hope you'll join us next month when our webinar is going to be Tuesday, August 2nd at 10 a.m. Pacific Time and 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a great day.